Well, well, well. What do we have here? Howdy doody, everybody. It's your man's Baberta out here for the very first episode of Gampot. What's Gampot, you ask? Well, my friends, Gampot is game potential. And don't worry, we have a lot in store for you. The topic for today is it good for the player. So shut up, sit down, and pull up your lasagna. Let's get right to it. Has it felt like we've been forgotten? Let me give you a little bit of background. Let me give you a little bit of numbers to digest before we really get into into it, okay? As of June 26, 2020, video game markets worth about $159.3 billion. Billions on billions on billions of dollars. We love that. We love to see that companies are doing so great to deliver us a product and they get some revenue. And this is great because this time last year, they were only at $152.1 billion. Think about it this way. If you in the industry could make seven point one. No, $7.2 billion within a year, I think you're doing well. Just because they're doing well doesn't mean they got the best interest for us in mind, though. Let's, let's think about it this way. How many times have we seen revamps and, you know, retouches of games come out, okay? I understand games take a long time to develop and such. You know, they started, Bethesda, perfect example, started developing and storyboarding Fallout 4 about a month out from, you know, Skyrim's 2011 launch, okay? I understand it takes a long time, but then you go and you revamp them and you say, oh, we'll buy Skyrim HD Edition, Skyrim Special Edition. Bioware that's coming out with the, the Legacy Trilogy or the Legendary Edition of the Mass Effect Trilogy. Don't get me wrong, I love Mass Effect and all. I played all three of them. I'm not going to talk about Mass Effect Andromeda right now. That's another topic for another day, okay? I don't have enough coffee to cover me for that, alright? But, you know, they're coming out next year with the whole revamp and retexture, whatever you want to call it, of the whole trilogy. I love it, I love it, I love to see it. it it's great because the first game is very archaic within textures and design, but it was such a breakthrough. But the, the point still stands that... The repackaging, retexturing, reselling, okay? That's where I got a stick and bone to pick. Is it wrong for us as consumers to feel like that we've been forgotten and then put on the shelf way in the back to gather dust like the trophy you got for participation in soccer when you were five, sport? The answer, subtle, nah. It's not wrong. Why? Because we just feel like we've just been shelling out money at the money at the money, pocket at the pocket at the pocket, shilling after shilling and bushel after bushel for all these games coming out. And some of them aren't even complete. You know what I'm talking about. You know some games when they launch, they're all bugged, cracked, you know, you know, it looks like they're on crack for the first part some of the textures just construed everywhere but you're shelling out all your money for a complete mayhap of a game okay that's where that's what got the bone to pick huh is it too much to ask for that you go through the game before you launch the game and make sure that the uv texture map isn't just randomly minus 300 on the z scale meanwhile your character characters walking through a doorway into another dimension i don't know man it might seem like too much for you not too much for me i i'm just built different but for companies that just want to pump and pump and pump and pump all the games and content into us for just just shell out our pockets right in front of them i i got to stop you there okay it's it's time you you think about us for a change huh Ah, oh, but by Berta, there's way too many different factors in today's world what are you going to do about it huh
I ain't gonna forget about it. I, in fact, I'm gonna talk about it. Why? Because talking leads to conversation. The conversation is what is on their minds. What's leading the market today? Today, well, you got VR, the Oculus Rift Quest, with the two, whatever thing, your Majiga it is, whatever. You put it over your eyes, you're in another world. Woo! Cool. Magic. Love it. Try, try playing Phasmophobia on VR. And you'll see that you're in a completely different world. You can get what I'm talking about. You go and watch videos of Phasmophobia on YouTube. Go ahead, go ahead. I'll pause right now. Pause right now. Go and watch. Welcome back. I hope you were scared shitless. If not, you're going to be scared even more when you actually go and buy the game and play it yourself. Get yourself a Steel Series headset or something. Or even play in on the VR. I couldn't even get past the front door. I was, I was way too long. Uh, not about it. Not about it, right? But the point being is while developers and studios do deserve compensation for the work, you need to look past that and quite literally think that they're running your pockets, G. There's way too much to catch up on these days. You got VR, you got the Nintendo Switch, you got PC, you have Xbox One and PS4 that's now officially, not officially, but now phased out into the Xbox Series X and uh, PS5. Cool. Love to see it. Brand new innovations. Just get a PC. It's just get. But when the developers are going to the games, they're thinking about the future. The future, the future. We gotta go to the future. We gotta go back. In any case, what is up with the future? The future is always changing and never certain. That's why when you develop the game, you gotta think, hmm, I think it's gonna be a hit and play on that bet big time. Because if you don't and you flop, well then he'll just go into the internet meme history of flops forever. Okay? It's the question of any industry. What drives the industry today? Innovation. It ain't no secret. But it is mysterious, and I'm not superstitious, but I am a little bit stitious, okay? I could go back and listen to what I've said to try to get a sense of where I am now, but I'm not. I'm raw. I'm different. I'm different like that. I'm built different. I'm bred different. That's why I got tatted on my chest. What? I got seven more minutes that I want to tell you, talk to you, uh, tell you, talk to you. I'm going to cut that out. Maybe. Who knows? I, I'm not. In any case, listen. We talked about how's it felt like we've been forgotten. Yes, absolutely. Kind of. We just see revamp after revamp. Blah, blah, blah. Money after money. Blah, blah, blah. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, let's get to the point here. Is there a chance? Well, yes. But, no. So, let's talk about the before you buy culture. Okay? Prime example. Call of Duty. Don't get me wrong, the marketing campaign that they did through Warzone, <coughs> broken. The marketing campaign they did, mock wobbly, the marketing campaign they did was beautiful. You had me going zippity zap, bippity bap, zoom boom, gadoom boom. Uh, you had me going to this website, you're deciphering shiz. Oh, I smell conspiracy. Amazing marketing campaign. Don't get me wrong, it's like how Battlefield 3 did back in, I don't know, what was it, 2011 or something? Notice how all the great games came out in 2011 to 2014? I didn't say that, don't quote me. But before you buy culture, I, the day it was released, I found a video on YouTube. This guy literally went from point one, like, started the game to midway through the game in less than, like, six to nine hours, ha, huh, nice, of the game actually being out to the public. And don't get me wrong, the marketing campaign they had me do all thrill, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, Warzone, and all that, 2019, it was great, but I was highly disappointed. Of course, going through some explanation vids in the end of, oh, well, you know, subliminal messages, this and that, and then, you know, rewatching all the history of the Black Ops Cold War, you know, the, the Black Ops series, and this and that, and trying to piece it together, you know, it made sense in the end, but I was hugely disappointed. That's, that's what I mean, the before you buy culture, BYBC. BYBC quite literally could make or break a game, you know? If someone were to release a video the same day that the game was launched, 
great I'm not gonna buy the game I want to see how the game is I want to see what it looks like the controls and the textures and then the storyline and how it all plays out before I buy it well I was disappointed so now I'm not gonna buy it it suffers but the BYBC brings me to my last point I want to talk to you about is there a chance for the community of course there's a chance there's always a chance the chance is big risk, big reward. If we can bind together, we as gamers must bind together. If we can bind together against these big corporations that are out coming for our pockets, I like it cut, G, right? If we can bind together against them, okay? Indie developers might be more incentivized to create, release, and expand. Meaning you might see some wacky, wacky, indie developed title out there that just blows up like fortnite PUBG. what i didn't say that but there is a chance there is a chance if you put aside the monetary value if you think hmm i really want to deliver a great product and you put aside all ways well will, will sell will it flop you will most likely get to create one of the best forms of art you know visual entertainment art out there you could you know do so cruddy in sales but be so conversed about via mechanics or texture or you know storyline that all of a sudden one to two years after you released you're already you're blowing up you're blowing up and you know uh brand new sales of revenue and all, all this and that if you take the chance and the risk you'll get the bigger reward now listen this means there needs to be a whole new renaissance forget corporations come back to artwork come back come back to the the whole group of nerds binding together to create a great game and a great storyline give me give me the halo 3 of 2021 don't give me all this other crud. I don't want to see it. But give me give me something that's truly good. That one stimulates me uh, intellectually, I guess, in a sense of way. Engages me. Keeps me interested. You got to make the game something original. Something unique. I don't want to see a carbon copy, you know, copa pasta over here, right? I want to see you and your team putting in hours on end to create something beautiful, something absolutely extraordinary, okay? I want to see it because what happens from there is you break through, you break the ceiling, you break the barrier, you remind everybody it's not just about pay to play, scrub. It's not just about run your pockets. It's not just about money. It's about actually having a good time playing some video games. I actually want to have a great time playing video games. Buying a season pass does not mean I'm having a great time. Strictly online does not mean I'm having a great time. Revamping old games so I can feel nostalgic does not mean I'm having a great time. Having a great time means you brought something entirely new to the table. And that, my friends, should inspire all the game developers out there that the renaissance, the renaissance to the gaming industry is coming. We have all this technology at our disposal. You have VR, you have computers, you have consoles, you have Nintendo Switch handheld consoles. We still have handheld consoles. What happened to the Game Boy Advance, you know? It went from the Game Boy Advance to the Nintendo Switch. They didn't really change that much except for you know creating better graphics and you know displays okay the renaissance and the gaming industry is here and it starts with you please be inspired to create a game a beautiful masterpiece work of art i don't care if you get the weird looks and all this and that bada bing bada boom you're out the, the window and stuff but if you are truly creative and you actually care about delivering a beautiful product, you will eventually forget all the corporate money, greed, and stuff. And you'll come out with a great 
beautiful game that's what people actually want that's what people really actually 100% want okay I just knocked over my stroop waffles don't worry about it I'm not but what I am worried about is where the big question of where do we go from here if we stay on this path and we stay on this trend you don't have any anything to come and challenge it you just have carbon copies of oh give us money early access oh you know well we're uh doing a roadmap of what the game should actually be like season pass don't worry you'll get all the stuff that's great but i want to i want a complete game first of all first i want a complete game i want to see that you've released a complete patched game of course there's going to be bugs that's fine i expect it but i want it to at least launch and then two operate okay but then I w second what i want to see is i want to see it be truly unique i want to see it stand out from the rest we all want to see it stand out from the rest you know we think about it mass effect was so mind-boggling because it was an introduction into the future into what could be you know the universe meets aliens after we discovered this technology and the turians they don't want us reactivating one of the mass relays and we got into the first contact war and then bada bing bada bam from there we're a huge galactic society what happened to thinking about hey we can be so much bigger than what we actually are so let's think out of the box and create something beautiful ladies and gentlemen i really hope that you liked this it wasn't coherent i didn't script it i don't script it i never script it it's not in my script to be scripting things it will be soon but not today listen it's bob berta roar ki roar king industries uh like comment subscribe follow uh whatever just stay tuned